country's National Reference Laboratory has been in the news quite a bit with the current COVID-19 testing underway. Our Julian Reed speaks with its director, Dr. Indiria Martin. And you know, everyone's hearing, the and hearing about the reference laboratory, but what is it really and what is your entire scope? Okay, um, so the reference laboratory is a laboratory that comes under the Ministry of Health. It was begun some years back uh, as part of the HIV research effort by Dr. Perry Gomez um, during the late 90s, I believe it was. And building upon those earlier um, works in HIV, we then expanded the scope of our work to arboviruses. So arboviruses include things like dengue, um, chikungunya, Zika, and so on. And from there, uh, again, under Dr. Gomez, I have to give him props for this because it was very visionary, I think. Um, he was the one who was the Minister of the Health, uh, health at the time who actually uh, got the instrument that we're now using for, uh, for COVID testing. Oh, wow. So the scope has now expanded from HIV to arbovirus testing and now to, to COVID testing. And basically we focus, we use a molecular focus um, to identify various viruses um, using PCR technology. Great. So what happens now? Um, the actual test is done on a patient. Um, they have the uh, swabs stuck in their nasal cavity, <laughs> which seems so uncomfortable. But, right. um, and what happens after that? Whatever is on that swab is put in a tube and, and brought to the lab. Right, right. So the, after the swab is, is um, collected, we then perform PCR testing on it. And PCR testing is a really multi-component, multi-step process. Uh, the first thing we would do is we want to isolate the viral genetic material because the whole thing about PCR is that it uses information about the viral genetic sequence to detect that particular virus with that particular sequence. And so once the swab comes, we need to take out that genetic material and extract it. And then from there, we subject it to what's called amplification on the PCR instrument. And if the initial swab did have some viral genetic material from COVID, then we would expect to see that the PCR would show a positive result in those patients because how, it would detect it. How long does that process take? It seems like it's quite complicated. It, it takes a while. Um, the process itself takes about eight hours, but with the analysis and reporting, it, it can be up to 24 hours. And this is pretty much a universal thing. It's a very complex test. So even throughout the world, um, you'll find it's very hard to get less than a 24 hour turnaround. You know, usually people would say more like two to four days turnaround mm -hmm. if, it, if, it gets, if it gets bad, you know. Now, we, um, um, well, the lab there is highly accredited, isn't it? Because we keep hearing that it's um, uh, fully accredited. Um, can you explain how we are accredited and where we are accredited? Sure. Um, we were the first lab in the Bahamas to become accredited, first medical lab to become internationally accredited. And that was in 2013. Um, we became accredited by the College of American Pathologists. And we just actually got reaccredited uh, just this last year in 2019. Mm. And that was our fourth one, I think. Every two years we reaccredited. How large is your team? At the moment, 10. It's 10 of us, wow. including, including not just technical staff, but also, you know, the full scope of staff. And since the COVID-19 uh, uh, um, outbreak here in the Bahamas, since it hit the Bahamas last month, March, I think it was, March 15th or thereabouts, how many um, tests have you actually carried out? Oh, wow. Um, off the top of my head, I would have to double check the numbers because um, the official, the thing is that we also, as is known, we also perform testing for, for example, Turks and Caicos. So I'd have to deduce those, deduct those and so on and so forth. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I, ballpark, I'd say a little over 500 perhaps. And the thing is that, of course, we have to um, ensure that the most at risk persons are, are tested first. So that's what we've been doing.